but the will itself is a covenant. <laughs> it's an agreement that I have made with myself. Come on, with myself first. I had a meeting with me first. <laughs> So that I would, so that I could dictate and determine how my assets would be distributed and who would be responsible for what. Now let's deal very specifically with the word testament. The word testament is typically interpreted two ways. And these two ways are very different. Um, well, I'm going to say these two ways are distinct. Let's use that word, distinct. Um, not very different, but they are distinct. One interpretation of the word testament is the word covenant. Another interpretation of the word testament is the word will, like a will, right? A will. And so no matter where you land in terms of the way that you would lean in terms of which word you would use, I want you to know that these are the two words that are most commonly used to describe testament. Now, why is this important? Because if the word testament means will or covenant, it means then that the Old Testament, let's get very simple here, is the old will or the old covenant, right? And it means that the New Testament then is the new will or the new covenant. Now let's, let's unpack this, okay? So the Old Testament, the old covenant slash will is divided into sections containing books on, the law, on law, on history, on wisdom, on prophecy. The, the, the New Testament is a compilation of books that are divided in sections called the Gospels, History, which is the book of Acts, Pastoral Epistles, which are primarily Pauline, General Epistles, and Prophecy, which is Revelations. Okay, but remember, all of the books, <laughs> no matter what section they're in, Gospel, History, Pastoral Epistle, General Epistle, Prophecy, are part of the New Covenant, New Agreement, new will and the law, the history, the wisdom, the prophecy are part of the old agreement, the old covenant, the old will. This is incredibly essential for us to wrap our head around. Let's unpack now the idea of a testament from the perspective of a will and then we'll unpack the idea of a, of a testament from the perspective of a covenant. All right, I want to read a scripture. It's in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. This is what it says. For where there is a testament, there must also be of necessity the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoke every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. So here's what I want you to see. I want you to see how I want you. I'm going to show you some distinctions between will and covenant, but I wanted to read this scripture first as we explore understanding testaments from the perspective of, of a will. I want you to see how specifically in the New Testament, sometimes these words are used interchangeably. You will see the first part of Hebrews or well, the first part of scripture that I just read here in chapter nine, the writers describing a will, but then you'll see later he uses the word covenant. Listen, when you get better spiritually, everything get better. Spiritual life is not the only important part of your life. It is the most important part of your life because it affects every other part that's important. 
but you don't get stronger spiritually accidentally. It takes intentionality. You need to get fed and you got to learn how to understand, how to interpret, how to apply and how to explain the Bible. The Bible's the blueprint to your best life. And I'm going to tell you, Sunday's not enough to give you the tools that you need to get better with the Bible. I want you to join me in my community called Bible You, where I help you take your understanding, your application, and your explanation of the Bible to another level. See that right? He says, for where there's a testament, there must also be the necessity of the death of the testator. So it's almost like if I have a will that outlines what I'm going to bequeath to my wife and to my children, that will is not enforced until I die. Got me? Okay. But the will itself is a covenant. <laughs> it's an agreement that I have made with myself, come on, with myself first. I had a meeting with me first <laughs> so that I would, so that I could dictate and determine how my assets would be distributed and who would be responsible for what. And then once that, once my desires are memorialized legally, now it is not just an agreement that I have with myself, right? It's an agreement now that's established between me and the parties involved. Now this is what makes it interesting. My will is a grace covenant. It means that there's nothing my children do to quote unquote earn what I give to them, but be my children. So I'm not obligated to give them what I spent my life accumulating. But because of grace, I will bequeath to them. Now watch this. I still reserve the right to assign certain stipulations to who must do what to actually acquire what. But that's still not them working for what I give them. Come on, I want you to follow me here. It's still not, it's still not works on their part. It's still a grace covenant because even though I put stipulations in place, I'm not obligated to do anything at all because I don't need them for the accumulation. I didn't need them, excuse me, for the, accumu for the accumulation of what I possessed. 